The Corvette hobby and the automotive world in general has lost a living legend in the passing of renowned race car driver John Fitch, who died in the early morning hours of October 31st, 2012. Death came peacefully at his country home in Connecticut. He was 95 years old. John Fitch, at an age three decades past a point when most men have retired to a life of inactivity, was a man who felt the rush of time and the accompanying frustration that there was never enough of it to go around. I am in agony over all these many things that I would like to do and don't have the means to do. I am a person who is subject to fixations, obsessions. Uh, I guess there are several words for it, but I get hung up on uh, an issue. I think it's uh, my inheritance from my ancestor, the John Fitch from Winston, who invented the steamboat. And uh, he had a hell of a life. So too did the man we now remember. John Fitch was a talented, multifaceted, and complex man. Words alone do him little justice, but there are many that apply. He was at once an inventor, war hero, philosopher, gadabout, sailor, automaker, safety crusader, husband, father, and of course, race car driver. Within a lifetime of travel and adventure, he closely rubbed shoulders with the likes of the Kennedy family in Massachusetts, General George Patton, aviation pioneer Orville Wright, and the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. Following a 1951 Grand Prix win in Argentina, he received a kiss on the cheek by Eva Peron. Actor, race driver Paul Newman was also counted among his acquaintances. Money has never been a prime, been an objective of mine. I do things that I think should be done. <laughs> One thing that he thought should be done was a contribution to Allied victory in World War II. To that end, as a P-51 pilot, he is credited with shooting down a German ME-262, the first fighter jet in aviation history. He remembered his heroics almost casually. And here was one taking off. And I had altitude, and I had speed, peeled off, got one engine, and he just banked around and went into the ground. Not long after, Fitch himself was shot down while strafing a German supply train. He was philosophical about that as well. If I could shoot up a locomotive so it couldn't be repaired overnight, patching a few holes, by hitting the high speed, the high pressure boiler just in front of the cab, which tore the big tanks all up, then there would be one more, less locomotive hauling ammunition. He spent the last days of the war as a German POW. Later, he dismissed the irony that seven years after the war, he would spectacularly drive race cars made by renowned German manufacturer Mercedes, all outlined in a book he authored in 2006. Highlights with Mercedes included 1952's Carrera Panamericana and a GT win at the Mille Miglia in 1955. It was also in 1955 that an automotive tragedy brought out the inventor and safety enthusiast in Fitch. He had been the co-driver of a Mercedes in the 55 Le Mans race that went out of control, crashed, and killed almost 90 people, including Fitch's friend, and co-driver in the race, Pierre Levesque. From that, John Fitch developed the Fitch Inertial Barrier, which since has been credited with making the everyday driving experience safer for millions of motorists. You ask me, what is my motivation? Well, it's, look at my history. That's what I've done. I go fight the war. I make things that, save people's lives. After distinguishing himself with Mercedes and several other long established marks, in 1956, John Fitch became the first manager for an American relative upstart in racing, Chevrolet Corvette. His association with Corvette would also become the stuff of legends. In 1957, the Corvette racing team claimed a prize for General Motors at Sebring. 
But his tenure with Corvette matured while working with Briggs Cunningham, himself a legend in motorsports and sailing competition. Fitch was tapped to co-drive one of four Corvettes that would race for the first time at Le Mans in 1960. He and co-driver Bob Grossman, against all odds and expectations, drove the number three Corvette to an historic class win and overall eighth place finish in that event. But two years before his death, we asked John Fitch to name highlights of his life. At the top, he placed his late wife of 60 years, Elizabeth. Oh my gosh, fabulous woman, fabulous woman. She had such a presence and such an imagination. She was magic, absolute magic. She was so quick. She had such a wonderful sense of humor. John and Elizabeth Fitch lived in the same Connecticut home for more than half a century, the home in which John spent his last days. I love this house. I was a young guy, I guess, even in my 30s when we moved here, and I've maintained this house. The couple raised three sons while living there. All were at his side when their father died. John Fitch left behind another part of his creative legacy, the one-off copy of the Fitch Phoenix, based on the Chevrolet Corvair. It never achieved production status due in no small measure to the rap Corvair endured in the book Unsafe at Any Speed. But even with such disappointments in his automotive life, he never lost the wonder he felt all of us should have about cars in general. It's a miracle at 15,000 parts work almost every day <laughs> uh, for 300 million people in this country alone. John Fitch's last professional race was at Sebring in 1966. But 44 years later, he was still making history. Helping Lance Miller fulfill his late father's dream of returning the number three Cunningham Corvette to Le Mans in France, Fitch drove the car at age 92 in a ceremonial lap around the eight-mile track. It had been a half century since he had piloted that Corvette to its unlikely place in automotive history. And John Fitch loved every minute of it. This last kid has a sense of history. <laughs> He's got a perspective on not just racing, but life. John Fitch never worried about the danger of his chosen occupation. He once said on the stage of life, death is a part of the equation. The cost of living is the risk of dying. Inducted into several halls of fame, including the National Corvette Museum, John Fitch had his own perspective on life. That's very simple. I just um, think in terms of any decision making process that that is a factor. I do what I think um, God would expect of me. A good citizen, a good American, and a good Christian has been my ambition. <laughs> I'll leave you that.